Good morning, everyone. It's Labor Day, September 6th, and here's a briefing on what's happening with the Caldor Fire. There hasn't really been any spread on the fire in the areas adjacent to urban areas. Uh, there has been spread in some of the more remote areas that have been spreading for a while. So we're going to take you on map tour here, uh, coming in over Myers. One thing that's different on the map today is I've got a bunch of these kind of light white or gray uh, polygons. These are showing areas on Forest Service lands that have been thinned for fire hazard safety in the last 10 years or so. Big part of the story here in South Lake Tahoe, Myers area. Um, we're going to come around and look up here on Trimmer Peak, looking over Myers and the airport. You can see that there's a bunch of areas that we thinned that did burn, and um, especially under these kind of severe drought conditions that we've been having, now, thinning isn't a guarantee that the forest won't burn, but it does buy us um, quite a few advantages when we have a thinning project in an area where we're trying to put a fire out. Coming around the top of Trimmer, there's a spot fire that showed up here a couple days ago, um, and that hasn't spread. So watching the, um, the briefings last night, it sounds like they're really comfortable with this head area of the fire. Um, when you get around here a little onto the flank, there's a little bit of spread. The fire is kind of squirted out on a couple spots here. The white line is the perimeter from the last two days. So in places where the red line, which is last night's perimeter, overlaps with the white line, it means that the fire has not spread. So now we're um, looking north over Christmas Valley up towards Myers and South Lake Tahoe. This red line uh, is inaccurate. There's been a few times. I think it's just the the way that um, the planes see down into this little narrow valley. Um, but you can see that all along the side of Christmas Valley, where the fire did come in, has um, been thinned in the last ten years. Helped us out a lot in keeping the fire from raging right into people's homes. Okay, now we're going to come around and we're going to look west along the south side of the fire. So um, kind of up over Sierra at Tahoe. This area here um, between Sierra at Tahoe and Kirkwood, um, for several days we've been talking about just that there's, uh, we've been expecting that the fire will keep spreading up out of here just because of the you know, difficult access and lack of, kind of train opportunities. They did try to bring bulldozer lines down into here, um, but kind of the story of 2021 is that you end up seeing almost as much dozer line inside of the fire as you do outside, just because with the spotting we're having, they're not holding up. So you can see in the bottom of this image, uh, you know, spot fire here that's a good quarter mile out from the fire and bulldozer lines just aren't holding up to the spotting. The bulldozer lines are great if we have time to do a, a large firing operation off of them before the fire gets there, but on their own they're really not doing much to help us hold the fire. So we've been kind of watching and expecting this fire to keep spreading towards Kirkwood uh, for almost a week now probably. Over here at Kirkwood, there, um, there really hasn't been much advance on the fire itself. Um, just, you know, a couple hundred yards here or there. Not um, rapid or to spread. You know, things like this, like this little finger, these happen when you get a good gust of wind, you know, like sustained wind for an hour or something at the peak of the burning period, which we, you know, we call the burning period the time of day where the fire can really run. So oftentimes, you know, at night it gets cool and there's not much wind and it, humidity's come up. And so often on wildfires, our burning period might only really be from, you know, one in the afternoon till the sun goes down. In drought and these dry times, one of the problems we've had in fires like the Dixie Fire and this fire is that the burning period sometimes is 22 hours long. But as firefighters, we need that break um, when conditions aren't critical to do things like firing operations. So oftentimes we'll do a lot of work at night, you know, between midnight and 6 a.m., 8 a.m. 
because that's when we have kind of conducive conditions to getting burning done without it being completely under out of control. You know, so no one wants to go out and let a burning operation at two o'clock in the afternoon on a windy hot day. But these conditions have been forcing us to um, to do a lot of firefighting during times where there's you know really low odds of success for us. Anyway, when you do have that kind of um, terrain, wind, and fuel all kind of line up with the good burning conditions, then we get these little runs. So fires, you know, kind of continue just to kind of spot its way and spread slowly through the granite here. The good news is that when you come over to the west of Kirkwood here, the fire really hasn't spread here uh, very far or fast for many days. You know, for a while, you know, we're getting these little short-range spots, and maybe the fire moves. You know, um, it's been a big day if the fire moved 50 yards here. This is the area we're talking about, kind of the backside of Kirkwood. You can see we've got some dozer line in here where we can. You know, just dozers kind of, a rule of thumb is that if it's over 30% slope, it uh, can be tough for dozers. Dozer drivers are totally crazy, so, I mean, they're not going to stop at 30%, but at some point, you just can't push without spinning out your treads. Long 88. Um, so there's a little bit of slop over here at Tragedy Spring that uh, you can see it slopped here a couple days ago and then there's what looks like a little bit of more fresh slop. This part of the fire we also have the, um, the fuel brakes turned on so as we get up here close to the intersection of um, Mormon Immigrant Trail and Highway 88 you can see there's just been a lot of fuel thinning done here and that is definitely part of the story that these have bought us advantages for firefighting, made it possible to do firing operations here under pretty extreme and difficult circumstances. And um, I did a more detailed video on fuels treatments on the Lookout YouTube channel yesterday. But one thing I said then is just that having a fuel treatment, it's not going to start, it's not going to necessarily stop the fire, but it gives you a safe place to engage as a firefighter for you to park your truck in a place where it's not likely you're going to get run over by a crown fire while you're, you know, getting ready to go fight the fire. As you can see, there's there's been a lot of fuels work done here, you know, um, including this is the Caples burn over right here in the center that we've been talking about quite a bit. And so when we map our fuels treatments, we, we map our uh, prescribed fires also. And you can really see just how little the fire did spread into that Caples prescribed fire. All right, so we're gonna come around the south here. The south has really been cooling off for a long time. Um, I turned on this layer that's, that's the isolated heat, which is kind of hot spots, which are you know, burning stump holes, large logs, uh, just because there's been, you know, people are asking, hey, how come we can't go back? How come there's still evacuations? Um, well, there's still a lot of heat out there on the ground. And we're kind of into our east wind season now, where, um, you know, kind of after the first of September, it kind of we're not surprised if we end up getting a north or east wind event. These heavy heat sources, if they're next to you know a tree or something that hasn't burned and get a stiff wind on there, um, they can flare up. They can throw spots. Fire can be off to races. You know, if you think of all it takes is um, one start to start a fire under the conditions like what we saw yesterday on the bridge fire up by uh, Forest Hill. So you've got all this heat on the landscape that's all these potential starts. It just means, you know, it's still in this really hazardous condition. And what we learned um, over and over is that when you repopulate an area, um, if you try to re-evacuate people after they've been out of their house for two weeks, it's a lot harder to get people to leave again. And uh, that happened in Greenville. So um, maybe we've got to be patient. Uh, no one wants people to have to be out of their homes a second longer than they have to be. but. Um, that's why we've got this heat layer on, just to show you that there's still a lot of heat out there. Um, the yellow especially has got a lot of scattered heat. But even the areas that don't have yellow where we've got these little red dots, there's a lot of heat. So uh, if you are still evacuated, you know, I really feel for you. Hope you can get home soon. And that's a little explanation of what's going on there. Okay, we're coming over Kybers. A lot of people have been worried about Wright's Lake. Um, 
a lot of dozer lines been put in here along uh, this flank of the fire. Here's Twin Lakes tra Trailhead and Wright's Lake in the center. Uh, so there's st still a little bit of intense heat out here. Uh, a lot of dozer lines been put in and not a lot of spread. So got some little fingers of spread here, but this has been looking pretty good. You could, like as, as I said, you know, the yellow, the white line is two days. There's two lines there, one for the last two days of spread, one for each day. So you can see it hasn't spread much in the last two days. We talked about how this area up here, you know, there's going to be on Pyramid Peak, it's just going to burn into the granite. All right, now we're over Twin Bridges, Sierra Tile. So we're going to swing around here and just take a look at Echo Lake. Still mapping a lot of intense heat here, um, but not a lot of spread. All right, so we've got a little bit of spread here. Not seen any spots. Uh, we, we have been talking about being worried about spots here that could threaten to spread out through the granite for a small leaf flake. We've had milder winds under this high pressure that we're having. Uh, the trade-off is we've got, it's hotter and drier, but we'll take it because uh, we can handle that right now, but we don't need any winds. Anyway, that takes us back to where we started. Uh, just coming here by the old Myers grade road, just to show you just how much work has been done fuels-wise. You know, the, all these vacant lots that are owned by the Forest Service, they've all been thin. A lot of large areas have been thin here. So that's a big reason why this fire didn't become campfire times two. And uh, a lot of planning went into that, a lot of work, a lot of permitting, uh, pretty incredible amount of work. So uh, three cheers to the fuels planners and all the people that made that happen. With that, I'm going to sign off. We're covering the Dixie Fire on the lookout. Uh, there's a link here. And uh, also there'll be a link in there to the talk I did yesterday on fuels management. Happy Labor Day, everyone. Thanks to all the workers.